Hi friends! I'm Miss Sarah, and I am filling in for our Steam Star of the Month video this month while Miss Allison is on a very exciting vacation abroad, which I'm sure she'll tell you all about the next time you see her at a program. Our Steam Star of the Month is Frida Kahlo for two reasons. One, it's National Hispanic Heritage Month, and she's one of the most famous Mexican artists. And two, it's National Recovery Month, and Frida had a lot of mental health issues that were helped with her art. So we'll be dealing with both of these when we read a picture book biography all about her. It's called Frida. It is words by Jonah Winter and illustrations by Anna Juan. Let's see what happens. Frida came into the world. There she is. For little Frida, the world is Mexico. Her house is a blue house, and it is in the town of Coyoca. Frida's father is an artist and photographer. He teaches her how to use a paintbrush. Frida's mother takes care of six daughters. Often she is tired. Often Frida is lonely, even though she has sisters. Which girl do you think is Frida? This one here. She does look a little lonely with her expression. I like her stuffed skeleton monster. What about you? Let's see what else happens with Frida. Enter stage left, Frida's imaginary friend. Her name is also Frida. They play games. All of a sudden, Frida falls very ill. She's in bed for months. There's something wrong with one of her legs. Even her imaginary friend can't cheer her. That's when Frida teaches herself how to draw. Drawing saves her from being sad. Do you have anything that you like to do when you feel sad? I like to read books or study languages when I'm feeling sad. Maybe you draw pictures like Frida. Let's see what else she does. After Frida gets well, she still wants to make art. So she paints little paintings. They're copies of other paintings. Painting onto photographs is what Frida's father does for a living. He teaches her how to do this too. Frida also paints things she sees through a microscope. She loves looking at things very closely. At school, Frida studies science. She's bored. School is too easy. One day, Frida is riding the bus home from school. A horrible accident happens. A trolley runs into the bus. Frida almost dies. Oh no. In the hospital, it's painting that saves her once again. Painting is like her imaginary friend. It's there whenever she wants it. It keeps her company. It keeps her from giving up hope. After the accident, life will never be the same for Frida. She will walk with a cane when she is able to walk. Her body will hurt always. But Frida doesn't cry or complain. Instead of crying, she paints pictures of herself crying. When she can't leave her bed, she paints in bed. When her whole torso is put into a cast, she paints on the cast. Nothing can stop Frida from painting. Because she's so often alone, unable to leave her house, she has to use her imagination. She paints what she sees in her heart, on top of what she sees with her eyes. It's almost like painting on photographs. She paints little magical scenes with words at the bottom. All over Mexico, people paint these kinds of scenes. Sometimes they're scenes of accidents, of angels coming to the rescue. 
They're like prayers for people who are sick. They're called exvotos. Frida paints exvotos of herself when she's sick or in pain. Frida imitates no one in her style. Her paintings are like nothing else. In museums, people still look at them and weep and sigh and smile. She turns her pain into something beautiful. It's like a miracle. Viva Frida! Long live Frida! There's an author's note that tells us a little more biographical information. That's information about Frida's life. Let's read it. Frida Kahlo was born on July 6th, 1907 in Coyolcan, Mexico, to Guillermo Kahlo and Matilda Calderon de Kahlo. At the age of seven, she was stricken with polio, confined to bed for nine months, and left with a shrunken right leg and a limp. At the age of 18, she was in a horrible bus accident that is too nightmarish to describe here. It's a miracle that she survived and that she was able to produce any art, considering the constant pain she was in throughout the rest of her life. That her paintings are among the most beautiful and original art ever created is a monument to Kahlo's indomitable spirit and willpower. That her paintings continue to be exhibited in museums all over the world and are reproduced in books, on posters, and even in advertisements is proof of her lasting popularity. Kahlo's popularity, which has been increasing steadily over the years since her death on July 13, 1954, began to grow when she married the world-renowned Mexican muralist Diego Rivera in 1929. Their personalities were both so colorful and their love for each other so intense that their marriage remains one of the most famous of the 20th century. But it wasn't merely Kahlo's association with the celebrated Rivera that sparked an ongoing public fascination with her. Her painful story... Her painful story is so inspirational that she's become a role model for artists in general, who often must work with, under difficult conditions. She's specifically been an inspiration to women artists who have found in Kahlo strength, courage, and pizzazz an example of how to thrive as a woman in an art world dominated by men. Frida. If you pick up our Take and Make packet this month, you'll get a tip sheet of how to draw symmetrical portraits. A lot of what Frida did was portraiture, which means drawings of people or of herself. You'll also get a Frida coloring sheet. So stop by the library anytime while supplies last for your own packet. We hope to see you again soon for our in-person programs once Ms. Allison returns. Have a great day!